Greetings again everyone, and today I have something pretty exciting to share with you, one of the most important lenses for Chinese manufacturer Lauer that they've ever put to market, I reckon, the 10mm f2.8 autofocus full frame 0D. Not only is this almost the most extreme wide angle rectilinear lens you can buy for a full frame camera, not only does it have the brightest aperture of its kind, f2.8, not only is it designed to have very low distortion, not only does it have a very close minimum focus distance for some pretty creative photography, but this is also Lauer's first ever autofocus lens. So congratulations to them. Well, if the thing works, that is. The lens's price will be 799 US dollars, which seems reasonable if it's any good. It'll be available on Sony E, Nikon Z, Canon RF, and L mount full frame cameras, but I'm I'm told that only the Sony E and Nikon Z mount versions will have autofocus. The Canon RF and the L mount lenses will be manual focus only. I'd like to thank Lauer for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review. I'm gonna try and put my excitement to the side and find some weak points to it here and there. Now, 10mm on a full frame camera is simply unbelievably wide, especially for a rectilinear or non fisheye lens. It's crazy, in fact, as well as being fun, yet challenging to use. Actually, it is possible to get 9mm full frame lenses nowadays, but come on, I think 10 is wide enough for most people, and the advantage of having an aperture as bright as f2.8 sets this one apart from the competition at these kind of angles of view. That means it could be a dream lens for astrophotography, and I can't wait to see what it can do. For better or for worse, this lens has a very distinctive look to its design. For a start, it's blurple. That is, its colour is a mixture of blue and purple, with a slightly shiny metallic finish to it. Cool, I suppose, a blurple lens, but perhaps not everyone's cup of tea. It looks awesome on its own, but slightly odd when attached to a black camera. Anyway, the lens is made of metal, feeling rock solid and weighty in your hands, and it has a rubber gasket around the rear mount for weather sealing. The lens also features an auto manual focus switch, and then comes a very large metallic manual focus ring, which turns incredibly smoothly. The lens is focused by wire, and the focus motor responds very well to that ring being turned. As you can see here though, the lens does suffer from a mixture of focus breathing and a little distortion warping as you focus in and out. It's not a serious problem though, even when video making you're not going to be making focus pulls like these on such a wide angle optic. And now, the lens's autofocus system. It's mostly good news here, as the lens focuses quietly, quickly, and accurately. Sometimes, when the aperture was topped down, I found the lens would focus hunt a bit, especially in darker situations, leading to some out-of-focus images like these, which also, by the way, demonstrate the sharply five-bladed iris mechanism of the aperture. But mostly, the autofocus worked absolutely fine, and greatly enhanced my enjoyment of the lens. Not that manually focusing an ultra-wider lens is that much of a big deal though. Something else very noteworthy is that the lens has a 77mm filter thread on an optic this wide and this bright that's pretty remarkable, and it opens up the world of polarising filters or ND filters. Thankfully, that narrow metallic lens hood can be removed to facilitate the use of filters getting them on and off, but you will need to use the thinnest ones possible to avoid physical vignetting and don't bother stacking them. A Marumi fit and slim filter will work here without causing vignetting if you want a polarizer, and they're good quality too. Oh, and a minor quirk I noticed with the lens is that its EXIF information reports it as being an 11mm optic, but it really is 10mm. Overall, the build quality is excellent, if you can get over the unusual colour, and the autofocus system seems to be mostly working fine. So, let's take a look at image quality. We'll start by testing this on a full frame camera, my Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are turned on. In the middle of the image at f2.8, we see excellent image quality, pin sharpness and great contrast. That image quality continues across most of the image frame until we reach the very edges, which see softness and some chromatic aberration on contrasting edges. 
f4 looks about the same. At f5.6, there's a small improvement though, and at f8, those corners are looking fairly good, if still a little dark. f11 sees another small improvement right in the very edges. At f16 and f22 though, everything begins to get softer, of course, due to the effects of diffraction. Overall, the lens is capable of very good sharpness, except for in those tub and edges where we also see some darkness and chromatic aberration. The 9mm full frame lenses I've tested before are very slightly sharper in the image edges than this. Then again though, their maximum aperture is only a quarter of this lower lenses, making it a much more ambitious design. Well, a 10mm f2.8 is also a highly desirable lens on an APS-C camera, where it still offers an ultra-wide angle of view despite the crop factor, so let's test it on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera. Straight from f2.8, the lens is, again, razor sharp in the middle. The corners continue to look a bit softer, and chromatic aberration is a little stronger, but at least they're nice and bright, avoiding that full-frame vignetting. As before, f4 looks about the same, but at f5.6 we see quite a lot of sharpness emerging. f8 and f11 continue to look very sharp, although stopping down to f16 or f22, again, causes softness from diffraction. Overall, the lens is reasonably good on APS-C, and we can certainly say it doesn't suffer much vignetting, which is always a bonus. Let's switch back to full frame, turn off those in-camera corrections, and take a look at distortion and vignetting. We do see a gentle amount of barrel distortion here, but considering the wideness of this angle and the closeness of my test chart, this is actually an impressive performance. Unsurprisingly though, vignetting is very high at f2.8. At f4 it looks about the same, but at f5.6 we see those corners brighten up just a little. That's as bright as they get though, I'm afraid. This lens has an insane minimum focus distance, which is wonderful for getting some really creative, crazy, close-up pictures of smaller subjects. At f2.8, we see sharpness when shooting close up, but contrast has bottomed out, and we are treated to rather strong colour fringing also. At f4, again, there's little difference, however, at f5.6 and f8, we see spectacular sharpness again. Nice! Let's see how the lens works against bright light now. There's nothing good going on here, I'm afraid. Quite a bit of flaring and glaring at f2.8, and even when stopped down to f4. It's only when you stop down to f5.6 that contrast begins to improve. While we're shooting in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. At f2.8, we do see a small amount of coma smearing on bright light in the corners of the image. It's the same story at f4, but stop down to f5.6 and it goes away, leaving behind some mighty looking sun stars. Let's zoom out to see them a bit better. Whoa, that's impressive. Stop down to f8 or f16 and they even get a little bigger. Very impressive, although I kind of wish they had more points to them. And finally, Bokeh. The only way to get background separation with such a very wide angle lens is to get right up close to your subject and shoot at f2.8. Happily though, the outer focus backgrounds do indeed look nice and soft. Overall, well, I'm torn between thinking this lens is a masterpiece or just plain crazy, but my enjoyment in using it and genuine happiness with its final results make me err on the side of masterpiece. Lauer have been very shrewd here. They've made their first ever autofocus lens. Well, autofocus on Sony and Nikon Z mounts anyway. One which has an extremely wide angle, meaning that the focus motor doesn't have the most difficult challenge. And yet, it's one which, even if it were a manual focus lens, has a bunch of cool features that make it incredibly desirable. A bright aperture, low distortion, close minimum focus distance, crazy wide angle, and good build quality. There's simply no doubt of the fun that anyone could have with this lens, even on amounts where it's manual focus only. My criticisms are that the image edges could have been a bit sharper, and that its work against bright light is poor when shooting at brighter apertures, but ultimately I liked this lens very much, and even if it's not perfect, $800 is a good price for it, and so it comes highly recommended. Thanks for watching everyone, and what a unique piece of kit there! A special thanks to all my Patreon supporters who make such a big difference in keeping this channel going. I make extra bonus content just for them, so if you'd like to support my work bringing you these sponsorship-free videos, check it out in the description below. Ciao for now, everyone!